star. On November 16, 2005, 16-year-old apprentice Josh Radosevich was looking for his 20th win of his young career. Him riding, I knew there was danger, and I told him he'd go and get hurt and all that. You know, he said he never thought about that. I never thought of death. I ever thought of death. The inside hubble the charmer as they reach the top of the stretch. Oh, Nyoka went down there. Uh, Nyoka went down there, hubble the charmer, lost the jockey as well. I knew it wasn't good when I seen him went down. In a small suburb just outside of Columbus, Ohio, Jake Radosevich and his wife Shelly raised their three children to love and care for the horse. Take him in there, Josh, and turn him loose. As a family, they've built a respected racing stable. I just own basically all my, most of my own horses, and that makes it a little rough, but because you know, then you gotta keep proceeding to get victories, to pay bills, and whatever. The only thing about the game of being a trainer is you really ain't got a life. I mean, you just gotta, you got everybody else's life, really. And you're trying to, you know, basic, you work around the horses, so they're like kids. They gotta be done every day. And you're mainly around them seven days a week. I'm around them every day. In 2000, Jake and his family began building an off-track training facility in their backyard, less than three miles from Beulah Park. This is where Josh watched his father closely and learned how to ride, where lessons were learned and memories were made. You know, he worked under me, um, you know, all of his life. Turned probably 11, 12, and he started galloping. I had him galloping babies, riding babies and he was enjoying it, and then he just started taking off from there, and I was trying to slow him up, and you know, he just kept wanting to do it more, and just basically a natural kind of rider. I mean, there ain't many things I had to tell him how to do, he just was natural at it. On the outside, Geis Buster, Geis Buster, wearing down Cincinnati Red, and Geis Buster and Josh Radosevich score here. You got it or you don't got it, and he had it. Josh's parents signed a permission slip for him to begin riding in the fall of 2005. The young jockey's talents were evident from the beginning. He won 21% of his races in his first six weeks. Josh's life was moving as fast as the thoroughbreds he rode. His concerned father tried to slow him down and take his mind off racing. He was riding a horse in Mountaineer Park and, and he was riding a six to five shot. And it was like $23,000 pot and I said, Josh, um, I want you to go ride today. He goes, why? I said, I want you to go hunting with me. I don't know why. And um, he's okay. So we and him went hunting that day and I was, can never forget it. He was driving his truck and I was driving alongside him. He was chewing his little tobacco and he goes, Dad, you know, guy, you know, they gave me a gift. And I kind of turned my head out the window, which, you know, he's your boy, you know, you kind of, yeah, what, Josh? He goes, they gave me hands. You know, I got, he said, I tacked a ride. And he said, the horses, I can just kind of figure them out by, you know, I get on the horse and riding them, I can just got a natural tack neck to it. I said, oh yeah, Josh. I, you know, sitting there, yeah, okay, Josh. So we went hunting that day and then he come back home and he goes, you know, I, cause his life was going kind of fast as it was. I was trying to slow it up a little bit. And he said, oh, you know, I like this, I, I needed this. The next day, it was back to riding. Josh and his friends went to Mountaineer Park where Josh won his 19th race with a near perfect ride on Trident House a ride in which even his biggest critic couldn't find fault. It's Trident House in front, Mr. Spock now going back to the inside. It's Trident House and Mr. Spock, Trident House just in front, Trident House wins it by a length to Mr. Spock. There's always mistakes. I'm, I'm a, like a coach, I'm going, I'm going to always fault you. That night, I watched him ride and, and, and it was a, probably the most perfect ride I've ever seen him ride. I couldn't even fault him and I told his mom that and he was all excited about that. And he would run over to my mom and dad's and, you know, told them that, you know, he was proud of that. On November 16th, Josh rode a horse for his father in the first race. Then, he got aboard Nyoka about an hour later. Usually my family and everybody go watch him ride every day. And for some reason that day, there's nobody was there, just me. Inside, Hubble the Charmer as they reach the top of the stretch. Oh, Nyoka went down there. Uh, Nyoka went down there, hobbled the charmer, lost the jockey as well. And the horse broke its like top of above the knee. And when he went down, 
it kind of made him go down, like drove him straight into the ground. Like he'd been better off if the horse threw him high as a telephone pole, but it didn't. It drove him and impact killed him. I run out there and and then um, I picked him off the track and um, I, I was looking for some kind of um, you know movement because you know in his mouth it had blood in it and I was looking for some kind of movement and um, I just told him oh Josh just cowboy up one more time just cowboy up and he was pretty much gone. I just looked up and uh, I just knew it wasn't good. I always said I didn't want my kids to ever be um, a vegetable or anything like that, but at that, that time I, was, I would take anything. Was I mad at the horses or at the game? No, I just didn't have no answers. That's the most, you know, why? You know, did I blame it on the, the game? No, because you can drive down the road and, you know, get in an accident. You know, you blame it on the street or you blame it, you know. I don't blame it on um, nothing. I, no, I'm not really mad at, at the game or nothing, but I did want to know where, you know, looking for answers, but, you know, I, I ain't found that yet either. Jake? Shelly and their two children are still coping with Josh's death, in part through the very sport that took his life. The early morning workouts, the thrill of winning a race, the love for the horse lives on. Together, they continue operating the Radosevich stables as a way to remember Josh, prolonging the family kinship that will never die. In January of 2008, Jake won his 1,000th career race, a monumental victory celebrated just down the stretch from where he lost his son. He'll never be forgotten by me, you know what I mean? Or, and anything I do, I kind of basically do it for Josh. As far as me being successful, and I, and I had my good days, can I give it all back to have him back? Oh, yeah, that's, that's you know, it'd be no problem. Your family, when it comes down to it, it's the most important part, you know, is with the family, being with the family and that, yeah, that's the most important part. They took him for a reason. I guess I'll see him at another, another end of the world, in life. Maybe I'll catch him at the other, at the other end of life. <laughs>